Hello everybody and welcome to this A-Level Chemistry walkthrough video. We're going to be taking a look at a 12 mark question about the mass spectrometer and isotopes. And this is part of the atomic structure topic. You can download a copy of the questions in the description and have a go at them yourselves and then watch this video. In the video I will show the thinking behind the question and reason out loud and write that down in blue and the answers that are going to get you the marks, they will appear in green. The question begins by setting the scene about the time of flight mass spectrometer. We are asked to explain how ions are accelerated and detected and have their abundance determined in the mass spectrometer. So first of all, the acceleration. Well, remember the ions are positively charged and so they're accelerated by attraction to the negatively charged plate in the mass spectrometer although you could just say they're accelerated by the electric field. Once the ions hit the detector, they cause electrons to be drawn towards them because they are positively charged, they attract the electrons to them. So we need to say that the ions are detected because they gain electrons. Now the number of electrons that are gained depends on the abundance of the ions that is hitting the detector. So in other words, if more ions hit the detector, more electrons will be transferred to those ions, and so we will be getting a larger current. And so we can just say that the current that is generated is proportional to the abundance of that ion. And so each of my three bullet points that I've written at the top is worth one mark each. The second question asks us to calculate the mass in kg, now that is really significant, of a single chromium-52 ion. So remember, anything that is detected has to be a positively charged ion, as we're showing here. So we are assuming that the mass of the ion is the same as the atom. In other words, they are inviting us to assume that the electron has negligible mass which is, broadly speaking, accurate. So the first thing that we need to declare is that one mole of chromium will have a mass of 52 grams. Now, since they're asking for the mass in kg, we need to convert that into kilograms. So in other words, one mole of chromium will have a mass of 0.052 kilograms. And then we need to make the realisation that this is the mass of one mole, which is Avogadro's number worth of atoms. And so what we're saying is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms will have a mass of 0.052 kilograms. We've been asked what the mass of one of these ions is. And so what we need to do is we need to take that mass for a mole's worth of ions and divide that by Avogadro's number, and we get 8.6 times 10 to the minus 26. So it's important to have at least two significant figures, but we could say 8.64 if we wished. And then we're getting into a time of flight calculation at the bottom here. We've been asked to calculate the velocity of the ion using the equation that is given to us here. This equation is pretty much always given to you. And they're making it clear that the m needs to be the mass in kilograms of the ion, which is what we've just calculated in b. If you got that question wrong, you would get transferred error at this point and the velocity is measured in meters per second, and that is our final goal. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. I suggest you substitute the numbers into the equation first, and then you rearrange those the equation with those numbers. So having done that, we get v squared is equal to 2 multiplied by the energy in joules, so 1.269 times 10 to the minus 13, divided by our mass that we've calculated, 8.64 times 10 to the minus 26. And then when we crunch all those numbers, we then need to square root our answer, and we get a value of 1.71 times 10 to the 6 meters per second two marks, one for the expression with all the numbers substituted in, and the other one for the final answer in metres per second. 
Then the question moves on to look at isotopes, and we're looking at bromine. We're told that bromine has got two isotopes, bromine 79 and bromine 81, and they are approximately equal abundance, so there's 50% of each of them. We're then told that in a time of flight mass spectrometer, the bromine molecule forms the ion Br2+. And so what that means is we've got one atom of bromine connected to another atom of bromine, and overall it is positively charged. So our first job for this question, it's a two mark question, is to work out how many peaks we're actually going to be drawing. And then the second mark of this question will be to get them at the correct heights. So we need to look at the combinations that we can get and what the masses will be. So the first atom of bromine, the one on the left, could have a mass of 79, and the one on the right could also be 79. For this combination, the total is going to be 158. And we could have the bromine on the left being 81 and the bromine on the right being 81. And that would give us 162 as our total mass of those two bromine atoms in the molecule. Or we could have one of each. The one on the left could be 79 and the one on the right could be 81, or the one on the left could be 81 and the one on the right 79. And so these two combine to give a total of 160 for both of them. So what that means is we've got four possible combinations but two of them end up with the same mass, 160. So two quarters, in other words a half, is going to be this 160. So that means that we need to draw a line starting at 160 and going up to half, which is this line that I'm showing here. And then we need to draw our other two lines. Well, one of our four lines, in other words, a quarter of the total, has got a mass of 158. And so we need to draw the 158 line up to 25%. And then last of all, our final combination, one out of four of our combinations, has a mass of 162. So our final line needs to go up to 25% at the MZ value of 162. So for two marks here we get one mark for the correct number of peaks and we get one mark for the correct height of each of those peaks. So in other words they need to be in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. And then the final part of this question has got a relative atomic mass calculation. So we're told that xenon has a relative atomic mass of 131.1. Sometimes that's our goal, actually, to work out the relative atomic mass, but we're told what the answer is. And then we're told that we've got four isotopes for xenon, and the abundance of three of the isotopes are shown in the table below. So you can see we've got xenon 129, xenon 131, xenon 132, and we've got their abundances, 28 and 25 and 27, and our goal is to calculate the abundance of this isotope and to calculate the mass of that isotope. So we're thinking it's going to be about 130, but it's not clear and we're sort of proving what that mass will be. And we're told to show our workings. You should always show your workings for any question that's worth more than one mark in case you make an error and you need to get some method marks. So first of all, the easy part, what is the abundance? Well, we know that when it's a percentage abundance, the total needs to add up to 100%. So we need to subtract those three separate abundances away from 100. So 100 take away 28, take away 25, take away 27 gives us 20%. So that means that our unknown xenon isotope has got an abundance of 20%. When you're calculating the relative atomic mass, the expression that you're using is relative atomic mass is equal to the abundance of the first isotope multiplied by its mass, add the abundance of the second isotope multiplied by its mass, etc. until you've covered all of the isotopes, and then you divide by the total abundance, which is 100. So you should do that here, but this time we know our relative atomic mass, 131.31. So we substitute all of the other things in its place. 
So the first isotope has a, an abundance of 28 and a mass of 129, and the second one has an abundance of 25 and a mass of 131, and then we've got 27 times by 132, and then last of all, and the careful bit here, is 20% times by our unknown, which I'm just going to call x. And then we divide it by our total, which is, of course, 100%. So that would get us our second of our four marks. And then we need to rearrange that to find out what x is, our unknown mass. As part of the rearranging, we need to multiply both sides of our expression by 100. So we're left with 13,131 on the left-hand side, being equal to exactly the same on the right. But I've done some of the calculations, as you can see. I've worked out what's in each of those brackets, and I've added it all together. And that gets us our total of 10,451, and that is added to 20x. So obviously we need to subtract that from both sides, that 10,451. And so having done that, we get 2,680 is 20x, and then we need to divide both sides of the expression by 20, and we get a final answer of x being equal to 134. Then we do a little reasonableness check. Let's look back. We are calculating here what the mass of this particular xenon isotope is. The others are 129, 131, and 132. So 134 fits well into that sequence. So this looks like we found a good answer for our fourth and final mark. So for the first mark, 20% for the abundance, nice easy one. The second mark is for the expression with the numbers substituted in. The third mark is for some rearrangement. You'd certainly get it for this, this penultimate line here. You might get the third mark for this line instead if you didn't do the third line. And then the fourth and final mark is for our final answer of 134. Okay, that's the end of this question. I hope you found it useful. I do have another time of flight walkthrough question video. I'll link that in the description so you can follow that up if you'd like to. Hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.